All right. On this episode of the Paranormal Mind Podcast, we are going to be diving into the intriguing concept of using your thoughts, beliefs, and energy to manifest your desired reality. Manifestation, baby. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Paranormal Mind Podcast. What's up, everybody? <laughs> See, Mandy, you're wincing over there, but you don't even have the headphones. In. Yeah, so you don't I hear. I can still hear it. You can hear it? I can hear the... Is it that loud? It's yeah. ridiculous. As we need it. No, it's yes. ridiculous, dude. It's ridiculous. So on this episode, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics as of late. And Mandy's too, apparently. Yes. And we're going to be talking about manifestation and where science meets spirituality. I'm manifest these headphones to act right. <sighs> All right. It's fine. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, Lord, help. All right. <sighs> All right. So manifestation is a popular new age principle that has gained mainstream popularity in recent years. But... Is there actually any scientific basis behind manifestation yes. techniques like visualization, affirmations, vision boards, and the so-called law of attraction? Yes. Or is it all just pseudoscience and woo-woo mysticism? Woo-woo. So on this episode, we'll woo -woo. Oh, Lord. No, <laughs> no. On, this, on this episode, we'll examine manifestation through the lens of neuroscience, quantum physics, Epigenetics, which is something I've talked about extensively yep. as well, and the placebo effect to see if there is hard evidence that our inner world can shape All our right, outer everybody. reality. If you're wanting to make your dreams come true, this is the episode. That's it. So keep an open mind as we explore the crossroads of science and spirituality when it comes to manifesting the life you want. Ooh. So the first thing I want to talk about is the neuroscience of visualization. Right. And right. If I can say it, it would be even better. <laughs> Maybe I need to manifest like better uh, <laughs> speech. If you dream it, they will come. You remember that movie? Yeah. Filled of dreams. Yeah. If you build it, they if will come. If you build it. There yeah. It's go. not if you dream it. If you dream it, you it can, can happen. You, you can, can do it. it. You can do it as Walt Disney. Oh, uh, well, I didn't know that either. I was just making things. And, cool. and, and uh, the infamous R. Kelly. <laughs> But my body. If you just believe it, my body there's nothing to it. We're not going to go any further into R. Kelly, though. No, that's please X-rated. <laughs> yeah, he dreams some things. He manifests okay. some okay. stuff. Okay, all right, all right. Let's move on here. All right. So one of the core practices in manifestation is visualization. It's using your imagination and the mind's eye to vividly picture your goals and desires. But can simply imagining something make it more likely to occur in reality? I think so. Neuroscientists say yes, and it's Ooh. all about activating the brain's neural pathways. See there, science says yes. And, and man. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm pumped. I'm ready to receive it. All right. Oh, God. I'm sure you've said that plenty of times before. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've said that many times, haven't you? Please, sir. <laughs> oh my God. You're going to kill Shane. <laughs> Please, sir. Don't, don't. I'm ready. The way you're holding your hands is just uh, all of it. The whole wait, thing. Wait, please, sir. What the hell? Please stop. I'm okay, ready to receive stop. it. Stop. You're killing me here. <laughs> now I'm all red and crying. Thanks a lot. I can't. Holy uh, shit. That. Threw me for a loop big time. <laughs> Please, sir. Oh, God. All right. All right. Numerous studies using brain imaging have shown that visual visualizing an action or scenario fires up the same neural networks as actually experiencing that situation. Really? Yes. For example, imagining kicking a ball activates the motor cortex and visual areas just like physically kicking one. And 
here you are. I'm imagining. Stand by. <laughs> you look like you're in pain. Is it uh, <laughs> please stop. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. So this is the basis behind visualization for peak performance used by elite athletes, surgeons, and other professionals. By simply visualizing their successful performance, they train their brains for the real life event through neuroplasticity. <laughs> neuroplasticity. Get it out, buddy. <laughs> strengthening, strengthening the associated neural pathways. That's awesome. So, so if you repeatedly visualize your desired outcome, whether it's a career goal, relationship, or achievement, you may be able to rewire your brain to more effortless, effortlessly achieve that reality through neurological conditioning. Interesting. Your thoughts and imagination quite literally shape your neural circuits, which if you're listening to that and you think it's just mumbo jumbo, there's, there's scientific evidence of this. So to kind of go into it just a little bit, and this is what's so exciting to me. And this is why I've been reading a lot lately on manifesting and I don't look at it. I used to look at it as like, oh man, this is woo woo, the secret stuff. If you've ever woo read, woo, if you've yep, ever the read secret. the secret, yeah, that was the uh, law, origin of it. Law of the... attraction. Well, it wasn't the origin. It well, was no, just one but of the as first... we know it, yeah, yeah, but no, th this has been around for yeah, for, sure. for a long time. But what's very exciting about this is you think about something, and this is scientifically proven that if you can think and feel an emotion right? Of like, for instance, and I've heard this analogy before, but like you receiving flowers, right? If you can like feel that emotion, you're more often than not yeah. uh, bringing that to you. You like, you can have that, you can have those instances happen in your life. Uh, it's kind of I, I, me explaining it is probably bad. But I'll talk about it more uh, in depth. Okay. So, you know, that brings a good point, actually. So, say you like something in life, like a, an actual tangible product, uh, coffee, for instance. Mm -hmm. You like it so much and it brings, you know, whatever delight or whatever to your life. You then set up your day in a way that you'll come across coffee more. Right. It's kind right. of the same well, and thought not, process. And not just that, but like what coffee gives you, like, um, Dope, the dopamine, yeah, you all of like that, stuff. that. So if you have the feeling of it, your body still provides that dopamine and everything. Yeah, you know what Wh it feels whether, like. Whether or not you have the coffee or not. Right. Which is yeah. very, very yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's amazing how this works. And I'll get more into it. But you do. You structure second. your time to get the things that you want, I suppose. It's interesting. Yeah. But it gets even cooler, okay? So we'll talk about the quantum potential and probability fields, okay? At a deeper level, the strange principles of quantum physics provide an intriguing model for how our focused thoughts and consciousness may be able to influence and even reshape the material world around us. In quantum theory, particles exist in a state of superposition, simultaneously holding different possible states, yep. locations, and trajectories as described by the quantum wave function. It's only through an act of observation or measurement that the particle state becomes determined in reality. Yep. Isn't that crazy? It's fascinating, man. So some interpretations of quantum physics propose that human consciousness may be able to influence the indeterminate state of particles and collapse the wave function through our perception intention yeah. and observation so what's interesting right is that like you can only see you know such peripheral about like this so everything out in front of me i'm viewing i'm putting together in my brain everything behind me is a memory right that your brain is still giving and so there's any possibility of things that are happening but because i remember it a certain way that's where i think it is you know right and that's the same with quantum uh, entanglement and you know yep it's your perceived reality right it's how you're perceiving it yep uh our focused thoughts and beliefs could potentially affect the probability fields of quantum potentials yep while still highly theoretical 
this provides an interesting framework for manifestation. If our consciousness interacts with and shapes objective reality at the quantum level, then perhaps we can use our intentional, concentrated thoughts and beliefs to influence the probability of manifestation of our desired outcomes. Of course, much of this is still speculative given our limited understanding of consciousness and quantum mechanics, but it does offer a potential scientific basis for manifestation grounded in our most fundamental descriptions of the universe. Yeah. So there's this book uh, called The Biology of Belief. It's by Bruce Lipton, and I've talked about this before. Yep. But he goes; he's a cell, cellular biologist, and he talks about epigenetics, which is above the cell, right? And I think I talked to you about this before, Josh. I don't know, and I may have mentioned it on the podcast, so forgive me if you've heard this before, but just humor me for a second. So what he did, and this was over 20, almost 30 years now, 30 years ago, he was in a lab, and he took a some cells and he put it in three different uh, Petri or is it Petri, Petri dishes, Petri. Petri, Petri dishes, put them in three different Petri dishes and they were all the same from the same source. These cells were all right. from the same source, but before he did anything to them, he took out the nucleus of the cell, which what scientists for many years believed was the brain of the cell. Right. right? He took the nucleus out of all of them. And he started introducing properties to each of the dishes. So in two of the dishes, he introduced um, beneficial uh, right. properties. So like uh, minerals and stuff like that, vitamins. And they would all flock to the cells would gravitate towards that beneficial property. But then on the third dish, he... Um, introduce inflammatory properties to it. And what did the cells do? They moved to the outer rims of the dish to try to get away from it uh, yeah. because it was damaging. But how can they do that? Without the nucleus. Because the nucleus was the brain of the cell. So what did this prove to Bruce Lipton? It proved that our environment shapes how our cells react and how they operate. And each one of us are, we consist, we're consisted of about 50 trillion cells. So if we're in a negative environment, what do you think our body is doing? Mm -hmm. yep. And this is why stress is so prevalent. He even talks about this. He says, um, stress originates in the gut. And if you think about it, he said, whenever you're in a fight or flight response, Blood rushes to your outer extremities because it prepares you to run, to fight, whatever, right? So where does it pull all the blood from? Your gut. Yeah. So all of a lot of your vital um, organ, everything, it pulls all the blood away from there. That's why he said that that's why so many people are sick because they're in an active state of stress. Right. And that is what's causing them to be sick. But if they were to change their environment, to get out of that fight or flight, their body will do what it's supposed to do and heal itself. Yeah. So anyway, he wrote this book, but let's talk about the biology of belief for a minute. So another scientific field that may shed light on manifestation is the study of gene expression and epigenetics. And that this book goes into epigenetics and his studies and stuff. So go check it out. If you, ha if you have the time, it's worth the read. I've, I'm, I'm, uh, in the process of reading it right now, and it's amazing. So according to cellular biologists, our thoughts, beliefs, and perception of the environment directly impact how our genes express themselves through epigenetic markers on the DNA. So you know how we thought um, our bodies mainly react due to our genetic structure? Right. Well, scientists are saying that's not the case Gen genetics play a smaller, a very small factor in mm. comparison to our environment, right? Which is mind blowing if you think about yeah. that. Because we've been told for years and years, oh, it's genetics, this genetics, mm -hmm. that, and they say, yeah, it does play somewhat of a role, but not uh, near as much as what we yeah. first believed it to be. Um, so the emerging field of 
uh, neurobiology shows that our thoughts and mindset hold profound influence over our biochemistry and physiology, regulating hormones, immune response, brain rewiring, and even the expression of our genetic code. Mm. Positive beliefs and affirmations can quite literally cause beneficial changes at the cellular level. So any of you that are listening to this right now, and this is something, the reason why I'm so passionate about it right now is because it's helping me currently in my life. Okay. So if I'm telling you this and I'm excited about it, just know that I'm putting a lot of this stuff into practice myself. So if you don't know a lot about this uh, manifestation and all of this stuff, please, the books that I'm mentioning and the information that I'm mentioning, go check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Josh's word for it. Check it out for yourself. There is scientifically backed. So there's really smart people, way smarter than me, that are have put years into this and they are saying that there is some factual evidence to support this. Yeah. Okay. So for example, the placebo effect, right? Mm -hmm. Where a patient experiences physical healing from an inert, an inert sugar pill because they believe it's real medicine. It essentially, it's essentially a form of self manifestation through belief alone. <laughs> Their thoughts and beliefs catalyze real biological changes like activating endorphins, immune cells, and neurotransmitters. Okay? You think about this. They've done placebo studies oh, where yeah. people no, have actually I mean, benefited it... off of this. Like, I, again, I've had an uncle, and I've told this story yeah. before, that um, he went in for a routine checkup, healthy as can be, went in, they told him, uh, you have cancer. Within two weeks, he was dead. Yep. I've seen it happen over if and he, over. If he never went to the doctor. State uh, of mind. I'm not saying that the cancer wasn't there, mm -hmm. but I'm saying if he never went to the, the doctor. The stress of it. Is the what? stress of it. He. Yep. It, it progressed something. So let's say that maybe he. It's had a, a perspective thing on receiving that kind of information. Right? right. Right. But let's say that he had a like, oh, you know what? I'm going to be just fine. And actually had that feeling, that emotion, that belief of health and perfect health. He probably, he, he well, definitely would be more equipped or that or, to, to to fight it, right? Right. And there's some people, there's some people that I've been reading on documented cases, and of course I can't see their medical records, but documented as far as you know the papers that I've been reading, where they've healed diabetes, mm -hmm. all this stuff mm -hmm. straight from thinking from a perfect health mindset, which is, again, feels woo-woo, but the more that I've been reading about it, there's scientifically based evidence so, to support this. It's, it's unreal to me because a few years ago, I would have said this is a bunch of bullshit, and that's what yeah. I would have said. So I think you the know? the main takeaway from manifestation is that it is the first step into – giving yourself a fighting chance on anything that you want, right? Without it, if you don't believe you're going to get better and you don't truly believe that, you can't just say it, you have to actually believe it, then how are you even supposed to get better? Or right? do anything. Or do Not anything. Not even health-wise. So there is definite, like, by default, that is, I mean, it it does circuit your brain in a way to start giving you perspective and direction in ways to manifest whatever it is that you're wanting. Right. Here's you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. My mind's all over the place right now, but here's another thing. Bruce Lipton, right? So he's done all of the, he's scientist for years and years. He said we're energetic beings and mm -hmm. we're, we're basically electrical energetic beings, right? He said that when people say good bad good vibes bad vibes like how people say all oh, that's woo woo stuff he said there's there's something to it he yep. said think of our thoughts and everything as a broadcast signal right and we link up to certain signals out in the universe right so if we're tuned in to a certain frequency, because everything is frequency, everything is vibration, go back to Tesla's yep. mm -hmm. Tesla's uh, quote on that. I mean, that's quantum physics too. Right. So like a radio station, right? If you're tuned into a station, 
that you're wanting to listen to, that's cool, right? Mm -hmm. As he said, the universe is the same way. If you're tuned into a, a bad frequency, you're the universe is going to provide through that yeah, signal frequency. all of the bad things that right. you're on an energetic level. That's why whenever we are out and about and we don't um quote unquote vibe with certain people is because they're operating on a different frequency. Yep. And we are doesn't mean we're better than them or anything. We're just on different frequencies at the time. So it kind of takes the judgment out of things a yeah. little bit. Mm -hmm. Like people in general are on certain frequencies. Doesn't we may view them as bad and uh, of course they're bad in certain ways, but it's because they're on a different frequency and that's why you see a lot of these people not getting things that they want. Me, for instance, going through a lot of hardships and stuff because I was tuned into a crappy ass frequency, you right. know, but whenever you turn to good, all of the good, because look, your, your, um, thoughts and everything determine your environment. I mean, it's a perspective so, again. It's, uh, I mean, uh, I've got a little woo woo for you. Woo woo. Go for it. Uh, Josh doesn't even know this, but I've no, like been really no. into this lately. Have you heard of my human design? Yep. Okay. Do you know the background of it? No. All right. So in 1987, it's very new um, in the grand scheme of things. This guy named Ra Uru Hu um, was who? like Ra, Ra Uru, Uru Hu. <laughs> I just said who. I, I, I was saying uh, last name. <laughs> um, so he's at home and he encounters what he calls the voice. And it asks him, are you ready to work? which I guess he says yes, because then he spends the next eight days and nights transcribing a 400 page textbook about your human design. And it, it's a whole, he calls it a holistic self-knowledge system that combines astrology, Kabbalah, Myers-Briggs, the I Ching, quantum physics, chakras, and a load of other stuff. And basically can tell what type of a person you are out of four categories, five categories. I need to know. Is it there's four, is actually it five? there's five, um, based on location, date, and time of birth. I, for example, am a manifesting generator. So a manifesting generator, a manifester can visualize the end Ooh, result. What am I? Oh God! I got. I've got to look up. I need to get your birth certificate out because I've been meaning to. So manifestors are the ones who create the movements. They don't have to wait for collaboration from the universe in order to act. So they you need the exact time it. that I was born? Yes. Like not just yes. today? Oh, my the God. The exact time because it can change by the minute. So what if I can tell you mine right now? What is it? Oh, I, we still have to look it up. I thought you meant your type. Um, so then you have reflectors. They're like the wise. They're the ones that reflect who you are back to you. Um, there's like 1% of the population is uh, reflectors. That's me then. For so... Sure. <laughs> manifesting generators so you also have generators who are the ones who can't manifest the end result but they put in the work to have the, the <laughs> manifestation <definitely> <laughs> yeah, yeah you're probably a generator i'm a manifesting generator so i am both i can see the end result and i know how to make it happen um, okay so I, I, I want millions of dollars mandy I'm trying for all of us. Okay? I need you to get, yes. And then get you the have projectors who are the ones that can project onto other types. And I'm not like a super expert on all of them yet because I've just in the past like month have gotten into it. Mm -hmm. um, I paid like the $6 to download the app and hear all my stuff. I gotcha. Um, it says manifesting generators are like superhumans when they are um, living in their like correctness so like they have the ability to initiate like a manifester but then they also make it happen like a generator so a manifester says i want to start this and the generator says okay this is how we do it we email this person we call this person we order yeah this, that's josh that. that's josh way. i think i would I'm be shocked sure. if you're not a generator i'm oh you could be a no you're not gonna be a manifesting generator <laughs> oh wow <laughs> I don't think you're rude. You you're not as into the manifestation. Just call me out yet. like that. I think you're a generator. I do. You're welcome. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's cool. It's an interesting thing to go down because, like I said, it's based on like birth time and 
location and date, but then there's like physics involved mm -hmm. too. It's it's super, super interesting. And there's like deep, deep dives that they go into about like deep areas of like personalities of the specific types where I was reading it and I was like, this is actually insane. How do they know this? We'll have to look you guys up. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I want to know now. It, I've been, literally I've been sitting at my desk at work if I'm a, and been if, like, if I'm a manifestation generator, I'm gonna be like, told you. I want to like I have been sitting working and I've been like, the birth certificates are right over there. I really need to find out what human design type he is, but I just Rude. haven't done it yet. She doesn't care. I'm probably I not even care. on the on the. Uh, yeah, they were like uh, on the graph at all. I can um, look you guys up. Well, not now because it'll take forever, but like I can look you guys up today and we can post when the episode goes up or whatever. Sweet. <laughs> sweet. So this mind body connection reveals that our, our internal psychology thoughts and beliefs are deeply intertwined with our biological machinery. If we can manifest changes in our cells and genes through our mental patterns, then the implications for manifestation of our desired realities become profoundly expanded. No, for sure. So let's put it all together. So when you combine the neuroscience of visualization, the quantum principles of probability fields, and the biology of belief, actualized gene expression, a fascinating framework emerges that may explain how manifestation techniques could be more than just mystical thinking. By focusing and concentrating our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs on a specific intention, we may be able to, one, rewire our neural pathways to more effortlessly achieve that reality, or two, influence the quantum probability fields of po potential, excuse me, influence the quantum probability fields of potential towards collapsing into our desired manifestation, or three, trigger epigenetic changes and biological processes aligned with our goal through the mind-body connection. Of course, much of this is still theoretical and requires further scientific validation, right. but it does provide a compelling model for how manifestation could potentially operate through known principles of neuroscience, quantum physics, and biology. So, again, you have heard a lot of information right now and, <laughs> and, and what I, what I, what I, what I would recommend doing is going and researching. Do your own this, research. Yeah, um, right now I'm reading a book called the power of the subconscious mind. Yeah. Um, I believe it's Joseph Murphy, um, who's the author. Go read that book. It has a lot of these concepts in it. Another book that I would recommend is the biology of belief. And that's by Dr. Bruce Lipton who's the cellular biologist that I was talking about earlier, but there is something to this. Yep. There's, we are more powerful than we give ourselves credit. For. Absolutely. And I, we, we can continue living in the, the quote unquote program that yep. we've pro been programmed from like so zero, true. from zero to seven years old where we're not good enough. We're not going to amount to anything. We're not going to do this. We're, we're or these poor. are the things gonna, you should care about. And right. That's it. Right. Get rid of all that, and these books will help you learn how to get there, too. It gives you um, very good concepts and procedures you yeah. can go through to kind of make this happen and kind of help you along on your journey. So I would recommend that you would go and check this out. But manifestation is very real. A couple of years ago, I would have said it's a bunch of horse shit, but I do not believe that now. I do no. believe that it is the basis. We can create our own reality. Yep. We really can. But it's up to us. We are from, I believe, a greater source than, <laughs> than ourselves, right? Yep. And if we're from that source, we're a part of that source, which means by default, we are creators as well. Yep. And we are creating things every single day, whether it be good or bad. So choose the good. That's why even in biblical text, it says, I set before you life and death, blessings, cursings, choose life tells you to choose life. So choose life. I've been, Dang. choosing. I've, cho I've cho chose death way more than I would like to admit. Okay. Yeah. And I've chosen negative stuff way more than I like to admit. But the key point in that is I made a choice and you can make a choice just like I can make a choice. 
and I am choosing life. Man. I am not choosing death. There's, there's I guesstimated based on things your mom told me about your time of And like, you're a generator. Like, you're a generator. Hell yeah. <laughs> Swear to God. <sighs> Hey, real quick. But real quick. you're also, your profile is the exemplary human. That is true. That's true. <laughs> Maybe. And, and you will never hear everyone you're, ever you're hear me say that again. You're not self-themed, which is <laughs> what, what you, like when you are not living your design and you're not like, if you're not acting as a generator, you're not self-themed is frustration. Oh, wow. You have a vision for turning ideas into reality, marching to your own rhythm, expanding the good in others' lives. That is sensing people's needs, the patience to develop higher perspectives. Like crazy. A nose for success. That is, that is crazy. Like, yeah. So. All right. Do mine real quick. All right. All right. <laughs> this well, is not fair. Right. I feel I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm choosing death in this instance. All right. Well, I, need, <laughs> I need you to be a manifester then. Watch me be like, oh, w- w- this did not register at You're all. You're a manifesting generator. Uh huh. See, uh-huh. you're the great life experimenter. You're also a not self of frustration. Your most important gift is sharing your take on the facts of life. Oh, that is absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> um, Josh can tell you that firsthand. Let's see. What are some of your other gifts? Creating new things, innovation. You're also marching on your own rhythm, a love of life. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. I do that. love life. I do love life. <laughs> Truth telling with effervescence. <laughs> effervescence. A natural ability to nurture and care. A warrior of the light. Oh. You're a Overcoming warrior. inertia. Self-creating joy and intolerance for roadblocks. Oh God. That is the truth. I hate roadblocks. Yeah, this is so. You guys really should look into this. That is you're, interesting. You're di- it even Josh. It even will break down like the best method of digestion for you. I'll get my producer on it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Shane, your strongest sense is smell, and you should eat during the daytime in direct light for your best digestion. <laughs> I know I'm a. I- <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a pale ass MFR, okay? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it literally says direct light. It's tell you know what? The sun. And, and you know what I take from that? I need more vitamin D3. Hey, see? Get that vitamin D milk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get that vitamin no, but D's you, but nuts. You know, but you know what? Uh you you even uh Beats but you think there. about this. Why would I be so heavy heavy on the manifestation lately? Maybe it's because that's in, in the core. Yeah. how I am and I just need to like awaken to it more. Yeah. That's why all these like we use woke as like a derogatory term, but I think to awaken to something then just the nonchalant shit that everyday yeah. life that we we need to awaken to what we really are and who we really are. We are here experiencing things. It's what the man doesn't want you to do. Yeah. Josh, your digestion is hot food. And your strongest sense is your outer vision. Ooh. Hot food. You mean like spicy food? No, because that's God, wrong. No. They got to look God, sexy. No. <laughs> oh, and your, your best environment is kitchens because they're cre- <laughs> creative. That is the truth. Wow. <laughs> creative hubs where people can commune. Whether Why are that's you calling me kitchen, out like that, Mandy? An art studio or whatever invokes that creativity. In so you. your reading is like, at its core, you're a fat ass. <laughs> Yours is kitchens too. Oh shit! We're both badasses. <laughs> we could have gone without that. Yeah, we're going to talk about this Deceased. off air, okay? <laughs> wow, wow. Jeez. No, it's, a, it's amazing though. Like it, we, we're here to experience something, right? We, and if we do believe all of the the manifestation books out there, right? Mm-hmm. They say that we are a part of God. We are God in, in essence, being experienced through His eyes, yep. basically. Right, made in His image. So, if by default God's the Creator, then we are creators as well. Yep, which means we true. can create the the future path of our life. We can do this, guys. Yeah. So let's do it. <gasps> oh Lord, my environment is shores and Get melting out of here. pots, places where multiple Netty different pots? elements or cultures <laughs> come together. Melting pots. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Places oh. where Net- multiple pots. cultures and elements come together. 
love. Yeah, the kitchens thing is is valid for us. Yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> thank you for calling us fat asses. Okay. <laughs> But thank you all for listening to this episode of the Paranormal Mind podcast. And remember that your life is more than what you Absolutely. think it is right now. It, you know who else remembers that, Shane? Me. Our sponsor, Horn Paranormal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good segue. Very good transition. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go check out our sponsor, Horn Paranormal. Go check out their paranormal gear. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the what? Searchers, Searchers Believe. Believe. You yeah. said it better that time. Yep. So it's patreon.com slash searchers believe. And um, if you're able to support us, we would greatly appreciate that. So, yes. So thank you so much for listening. And until the next episode, we'll talk to y'all later. Love y'all.